Mitt Romney doubling down his criticism of Donald Trump, saying just this morning in a new interview that the Republican presidential race he believes has sunk to a new low and that he will do anything within, quote, political bounds to stop Trump from becoming the GOP nominee. Here's some of that. There are a lot of people, establishment or not, who agree with me that Donald Trump should not be president of the United States and don't want to see him become the Republican nominee. Right now, it's about 65 percent of Republicans who'd like someone else. Joining me now, Emily Tish Sussman, campaign director for the Center for American Progress Action Fund, and Pete Snyder, former Republican candidate for lieutenant governor of Virginia and Fox News contributor. Welcome uh, to both of you. Good to have you both here today. Good morning, um, Martha. Good morning, guys. So, Pete, uh, let me start with you. Um, you just heard that soundbite from Mitt Romney. We're going to play a couple more because they were pretty interesting this morning. Um, he says, look, I, I just represent 65 percent of the party. I respect Mitt Romney. Uh, I disagree with Donald Trump. I think Mitt Romney would have made a very good president, but he is the complete wrong spokesperson for this issue. Donald Trump has been spending the last year saying the establishment is out to get me, and the spokesperson for the establishment, Mitt Romney, finally pipes up and tries to attack him when he's on his way to the nomination. Uh, I just think it's the, you know, some of the message can be good, but it's the absolute wrong messenger right now, and All it's right. helping Donald Trump. All right, let's, let's, let's play another uh, bit here from this morning on the Today Show. Watch this. When he calls George W. Bush a liar, when he says that Putin is a strong and powerful leader, popular with his people, when he mocks a reporter because of their disability, when he attacks women based on their looks or their menstrual cycle, you basically got a guy that is out of the kind of realm that I'd want to have Did support you So, Emily, I would imagine that uh, Democrats are just sort of enjoying this whole thing, right? Well, I mean, I think that's really putting politics above above everything else. I think that, look, I may disagree in the pathway that Romney saw for the country, but I don't question that he has that he's in it for the right reasons and that he was running because he really felt it was the right thing to do for Americans. And I think that that's where he's coming from right now, that Trump is just does not represent what a lot of people feel. They do not represent where people want the country to go. They do not see him as presidential. And I think that Romney's right to say that. But I also think that Matt's right, that this is exactly what, Repu what the Trump supporters love. They love him being attacked, and so they love the establishment coming after him, and it only amps them up more and more. I think yeah. this is the Republican Party seeing that this should have been done months ago, a year ago, but everyone thought that he would implode, but nothing can touch him. Yeah, I think that that was the reaction of a lot of people, that it was um, too little too late for that, for that effort, if that's what he wants to undertake. Um, and clearly there are a lot of people who have had their um, imagination activated by Donald Trump and his vision for the country and where he says he can take it. Um, this morning, Matt Lauer pressed uh, Mitt Romney on an important question, which is, is this really about you jumping in to try to be the white knight at the end? Here's what he said. There are no circumstances I can foresee where that would possibly happen. But let me say something else. I can the foresee. Term, no, no, no reasonable scenario I can imagine. Just slam but, the door on it. Close the door. Look, Unambiguous. Look, I, you will not, not gonna, run for I'm president. Not, I'm not running for president, and I won't run for president. Pete, do you believe that? I think there, he left some uh, some room in the door there, Martha. Uh, you know, I, look, I think this is just a, Mitt Romney had every opportunity to run for president. He wanted to run for president. Jeb Bush squeezed him out. Uh, Mitt Romney had a great opportunity to endorse a candidate that he liked in the start of this thing. He chose not to. And I really believe I agree with Emily. It's too little too late at this point in time. And he's the wrong sp spokesperson for his message right now. All right, last one. He touched on the uh, tenor of the debate last night on that stage and kind of where it was at some points. It's very clear to point to the person who's been the uh, smallest adult, and that's Donald Trump. Last night he kept pointing at Marco Rubio and saying, little Marco, little Marco. I mean, this is, this is a new low in, uh, in presidential politics and simply, simply wrong. Pete, I want to stay with you on that. Is he right about that? And do you see the sort of shattering happening in the party that Peggy Noonan writes about this morning in the Wall Street Journal? Or do you believe, you know, sort of the last question of the debate last night, which was that eventually the party will come together and support perhaps Donald Trump, who's clearly the front runner right now? Well, I think the party has a great opportunity to come together when you have every single candidate pledging that they'll support the other. That's a really big deal. Um, but I do think, and I, I'm worried, that if there's some ill-fated uh, scheme to try to wrestle the nomination away from someone and hatch a smoky backroom plot, 
uh, that it's going to get really ugly. And this is just, again, Mitt Romney is the wrong person uh, to be doing this. In sports terms, it's kind of like a Dallas Cowboy fan or a Duke fan entering a sports debate. They completely alienate the rest of the people involved. Uh, wrong, you know, some of the message is good, but the wrong, the wrong messenger right now. All right. Donald Trump, uh, Emily, says that he has not begun when it comes to his attack that he looks forward to launching on Hillary Clinton. Um, is he the person that the Democratic Party fears the most, even though he doesn't measure up that well in some of the polls against her? Yeah, I, I, I think this is, honestly, like, I think this is still going into, like, the horse race and the politics of it all, like, you know, who's a good matchup, who's a good candidate. I think he's, I think he's just scary to a lot of people. Like, I think his candidacy is just scary. I think Clinton is talking about issues. I think she's being very realistic about them, which has turned off a little bit of the left that want these big imaginative things. But she's acting like she's getting ready to be president. So I think if they do go into that head-to-head, -head, that, that contrast is going to be very clear to a lot of people even a lot of people that have traditionally voted Republican who are going to say, look at the contrast here. You know, he's well, acting like a middle a contrast, school. But I think they've like got to be concerned about the turnout uh, that we're seeing and the enthusiasm and the phenomenon aspect uh, of a Donald Trump pres uh, presidential run. So we'll see. But I think it could work both ways. Could. I we'll think see. that he could incite a lot on the left as well. All right. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Pete. Good to see you both. Thank you. Great.